Hello and welcome back to Mikey's Fly Deck. Today I will show you how you can build the captain's upper MRP section for your Boeing 737 home cockpit. At the beginning you will need two 8 position rotary switches, a big on off on switch and a small momentary on off on switch. To hold the different layers together I used a combination of screws and nuts or 15mm hex standoffs. And here you can see me unmounting the big switch because it has to be installed later. You will also need some yellow, red and green annunciators. This is a second version of my switch here that finally came out with a crisp and clear clicking event. But to achieve this and to handle the construction of this switch here, you have to keep some points in mind that I will explain you now. First thing, here I have the yellow LED and here is the red LED. You see the difference? No. Well, that's my problem too. And to stay on top of which LED is in which position in this uh, switch here, I follow an easy guide. There is a hole inside here in this inside case of the switch. And this is so that you can reach in with a tool to get out the label again if you need this. I keep this hole orientated on the right side from my perspective. And then the yellow LED comes in up here and the red LED down here. And so every time when you want to know which LED is which, then you just have to turn the inside case so that this hole is on the right side and then you know again the upper LED is a yellow one, the lower one the red. And this is also a help when you want to bring the label in place, so you know this will be the orientation of the label. There are these notches on both sides here, left and right. And these notches are also on the inside of this case. And so you know how this is orientated in this outside case, the holder. Later, we will bend the um, legs of the LEDs on the back of the inside case here. And I want to keep the grounds of uh, the uh, LEDs on the left side from my perspective here. And they will be bent so that they will build a shared ground connection. I don't want to bend them on the right side here because then they would block this hole and I can't reach in there again. They will build their shared ground connection in this corner here. And when we look down at the bottom of the outside case, then you'd see three holes. One for the ground connection and one for each anode of the LEDs. I 
I placed a 6x6 mm tactile button with a height of 8mm inside of the holder box. I brought the big switch in position to act as a guide for the plate that I want to glue in place. I want to take the time now to speak about some things at this panel that might come out not as clear as I thought uh, when you only have seen the making of footage. The first thing, I have accidentally uh, switched the soldering of the two rotary switches here and I was able to uh, disassemble and reassemble the switches at the correct position. But for you to make this clear, the outer one here is the switch with the many more connections and with the three connections is only this switch here. So this is now correct. This black plate here at the light test switch. I have made this um, plate from one millimeter polystyrol that I have painted and engraved. If you don't have this material then you can also change the design a little bit like all the other switches on a panel and you can make this from normal 3 mm acrylic. To make this uh, polystyrol stay flat on uh, the acrylic here you have seen I have glued this on with epoxy glue and I have cut out a special template so that I can bring the pressure um, onto the whole area here. And this is important so that the plate really sticks flat to the acrylic here. And this wouldn't be necessary if you would make it from 3mm acrylic because this is already flat and really stiff and it would be pressed in place from this nut here. And some words about these buttons here. I've only made one design for all the three buttons, but only these two AP and AT buttons have two uh, different colors, yellow and red. The FMC button here only has a yellow color, but I thought a separate uh, design for this isn't necessary and you just have to keep in mind that you only need a yellow LED for this button. And some last words about all these annunciators down here. I have searched long uh, in the web which annunciators are situated here on this panel and I think it depends. There are so many different versions out there which uh, annunciators are there or aren't there and at the end I thought the more lights in the cockpit the better it looks and so I think this is my decision uh, of the number and types of annunciators situated here. So you are free 
to copy the design um, of the 737 that you prefer the most. Now when everything is assembled, it's time to test the configurations in MobiFlight and ProSim. This time in this video directly, because it's not a very fancy configuration, just some LEDs and buttons, and it didn't make sense to bring the configuration out as a separate video this time. But one thing I want to show you first, because this is, at least for me, a new feature here in MobiFlight. I have talked about this feature with Sebastian on the FS Weekend and only some weeks later this was implemented in the software and this is something that shows really how fast MobiFlight is developing and how fast it can react to uh, wishes from the community. I had the problem that when I restarted my software like ProSim or MobiFlight, the settings of my hardware differed from the settings in the software and I had to synchronize them manually. And this was a very time consuming process and it could also lead to some errors. And so they implemented a feature here under extras and settings. And this is the auto trigger feature. It automatically performs a re-trigger action with the run mode. What does this mean? When you click run in MobiFlight, then it synchronizes the values of the different configurations with the settings of your hardware. I will show you what this does here. So when we don't have this action here and we click on run. We will test this here with the lower DU switch uh, from the captain. You can see this here in ProSim. The lower DU captain switch here is on normal and the other one, um, the main panel DUs here is also on normal. So the first test, you can see it is already working. Uh, lower DU on ND or let's uh, do it for to be more easy on engine pry and also the main panel du. So they are both set to engine pry. Now I stop MobiFlight and when I now change something here at the uh, hardware, for example, both on normal here and I run it again, you can see ProSim wasn't uh, informed about this change. And only when I change the state of this switch here, for example, here to ND, then a new event is triggered. And now ProSim uh, has the knowledge of the new value and back to normal. So let's do it on engine pry again and stop it. But with this new feature here, auto retrigger activated, when I now change something on the hardware, uh, when no software is running. So both switches here are on normal now. And I click run in MobiFlight. You can see both switches in the software synchronize with the state of the hardware switches. And this is a really cool feature, at least for my workflow and testing workflow. So thanks again for making this possible. And now back to the test of my configuration. In MobiFlight, I have declared a new Arduino, my Arduino M, and declared uh, some devices, only buttons and LEDs and many of them, especially LEDs. And I don't know why I haven't done this uh, directly because I have done this in the configuration or the hardware configuration of my fire panel. There I have used shift registers for controlling many LEDs. And uh, this offers the possibility to just use 
three pins for controlling many more LEDs. I can control all the 11 LEDs here on this panel with only three pins on my Arduino. And this is something I will make later here with my hardware. I will install these shift registers, resolder the connections a little bit, but for now we will stay with this configuration. For all the devices I have made output configurations down here for the LEDs and input configurations for the switches. If you are new to this topic then watch my dedicated video about this. I will go into every detail from the beginning when you want to control hardware with MobiFlight and Prosim. We have already done this a little bit so let's test the switches first. The main panel DU switch from the captain side, here it is. It is on normal, this is right. Let's click here run in MobiFlight and see if ProSim gets the right values. Outbound, there it is. Normal, engine pry, PFD and MFD, this is working. Low DU, engine pry, up here you can see this, normal, Andy, this switch is working. Let's see if these buttons here are working and we will find them up here. The AP reset from the captain side is off and now I press it. You can see it is now pushed, so working. The AT button pushed. So it is working. The FMC reset is working. And let's see here the test switch on one. You can see it is working because the lights are illuminated. And two, the red lights, or for the FMC, the yellow light are working. So this switch is working too. Let's find the lights test switch. You can find it here under the lighting tab. And here is the light test switch. It is on bright with is the middle position. Now to dim. There it is, dim. Back to bright and test. There it is on test. And you can see already many of the annunciators are illuminated. These two speed brake armed and speed brake do not arm are not illuminated. I don't know if this happens in the real one. If not, and if they should be illuminated now, you can write this down in the comment section and then I can modify the configuration of these two LEDs so that they are forced to be illuminated when this switch is in the test position. So this is it for the switches and now let's come to the LEDs. Here we can use the test function that we find here in the MIP tab and down here we have all the annunciators. We have seen already the lights of the uh, autopilot buttons are working correctly and now let's test the other annunciators uh, again separately. Below glide slope from the captain side we have here. So a yellow one is illuminated. Let's go to the takeoff configuration here. There it is. A red one is illuminated. Cabin altitude we have here. Again a red light is illuminated. Speed brake armed which is here uh, the spoiler armed. There they are. A green one is illuminated. Speed brake do not arm. There it is. A yellow one is illuminated. And the step out of trim annunciator. Down here we have it. It is working too. So 
This means the whole configuration is working. Now this thing can be built in to the MIP frame. And here it is at its final place. It slided in absolutely smooth, there was no problem and the alignment of the outer edges here is perfectly, the upper edge fits perfectly, everything fits as designed, absolutely fantastic. I will make the change I have talked about, the installation of the shift registers. Again, you will find all the needed files to cut out and engrave your own panel section as well as the 3D print files for the annunciators and buttons in the member section of my website. I will now move on to the first officer site and I think I can build a similar piece uh, for the section there. And if you don't want to miss this upcoming episode, then subscribe to my channel to stay informed about any upcoming new video from me. And I hope we'll see you soon back on the flight deck. Good one.